Good afternoon. My name is Rickard Andekrans. I'm a healthcare equity research analyst here at ABG Sundal Collier. So we're moving on with our agenda today and I'm very happy to present uh, the recently appointed CEO of Ostdesign, Morten Hannibal. So without further ado, the floor is yours. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Ostdesign's uh, presentation. Just before we get started, um, as Richard said, um, I just joined Ostdesign the 1st of September, so I felt it was appropriate to share a few words about myself. So I'm a Danish native. I'm 43 years old. Um, I've been in the game more or less 20 years, a little bit more, uh, and actually spent the last 12 years in the metric field, having various senior positions, um, not not least with, uh, with Timo Biomed, one of the orthopedic giants, uh, where I had multiple roles. Um, during my time, I've spent a lot of, um, actually a lot of my time on what I call transformational leadership. So, so either in, in pure turnarounds or more importantly, actually around growth acceleration. So that was about me. It's not about me today. It's around uh, uh, us design. So I suggest that we move on. So us design at a glance, the company started in, in 2011. We are about 40, uh, 40 employees today. And last year, we, we IPO'd. Essentially, what we have is we have developed a platform that shows much improvement in bone regeneration. Bone regeneration is a key topic across the orthopedic field because it leads to better clinical results. And what we also have now is we've proven it clinically across a number of studies. Uh, and most recently, we also published the studies that actually showed that we can replicate the same thing outside the field we're in today. We did it in oral cavity. Still indication, but it shows that this is the platform we're dealing with. The company has consistently delivered high growth rates since we started to commercialize. Today, we have a commercial footprint in place. We have regulatory approvals. We have sales forces, either direct sales forces or distributors in all key markets, and most notably in the US, which is the most important market for us design. And what you hear me talk about a lot today is growth, and it's growth acceleration. And that's the thing I would like you to take away from this presentation is us design is around growth, and it's around growth acceleration. If we just take a little bit step back and look at where we're coming from and, and, and that brought us to today, then you can see the movement has been quite fast actually in the company. But I do want to draw your attention to the fact that in 18, we, uh, we announced that we had done 500 implants, but only a few years later, that number, which we just communicated this morning actually, is now 1,000. So I think that's a testimony to the acceleration and the growth that we're seeing and the underlying momentum we're seeing in the business. Today, we of course, we operate in the, in the orthopedic uh, industry, but specifically in the CMF. And our addressable market today is a subset of the market. But it's a very attractive niche. It's worth about, give or take, uh, five, six hundred million dollars. It has underlying volume growth. It has, it has good pricing. So we feel comfortable actually where we are. We can grow in the space that we're in today. But it's also very clear that we have a number of opportunities if we wish to pursue them to go into adjacencies. We can either develop the technology platform, as I said earlier, or we can use our established commercial footprint and the infrastructure to actually bring new products into the portfolio. What we are addressing today is a very clear unmet need. 10 to 15% of implants has to be removed today. It's an un unacceptable high amount of patients and the clinical outcome are clearly not as we want them to be. It's either caused by bone resorption or because the implant gets exposed or infected. But 10 to 15%, that is the average of, of actually unsuccessful outcomes today, and which is way too high in our view. So what we have developed 
is really a unique calcium phosphate composition that together with the mesh, which is the titanium 3D printed, just generates, a better, it generates more bone ingrowth and it, it generates better clinical outcomes. To deliver that, we have developed a bespoke digital platform that actually allows us to interact very, very closely with the surgeon from the very beginning where the patient comes in until the implant is delivered. And the outcome is very clear. We did a post-market surveillance study that we published a little under a year ago on almost 700 patients, and 2% of implants were only removed. So I'll just pause here. 2% of implants were removed. It's an X5 to 7 compared to what we see in the market. So we think there's enormous potential uh, in this product. And it has also been supported today by numerous uh, publications peer in peer-reviewed uh, journals. And, and, and those results has also allowed us to really build a strong key opinion le leader network of people that want to work with us, that want to continuously prove that this is a good thing for patients, it's a good thing for healthcare systems. If we look at the portfolio as, we, as, as, as it looks today, then it's essentially three different categories. We have our patient-specific implants where the cranial clearly is the, the dominating product uh, across those products. We've also uh, introduced uh, what we call an off-the-shelf uh, implant, which is the cranial plug, uh, which has been launched just before uh, COVID. But, uh, and, we, and we think that that is an essential product, actually, to help us drive scale in the product, because uh, in the business, because this is not something that is specific to, a, to any, any patient as such. It's really something that we can help to drive scale. And last but not least, as I said, we have the digital platform that, that really help us get those very, very good results because of the interactions and the close collaborations with surgeons. So one thing is the technology. The other one is the commercial platform or infrastructure, which is really paramount to the future of us design. And that is one area where me as an incoming CEO is, is extremely proud to see what we have managed to achieve. So we have a full global footprint with regulatory approvals in place and sales forces in all key markets or distributors where they're needed. If you look at the US, we have 510K approvals. We have a direct uh, sales uh, subsidiary set up and we have a number of what we call sub-dealers or partners across, uh, uh, across the, the country that help us drive sales. If we look at the US, we also have the regulatory approvals. We have a direct uh, sales force set up in, in, in the key markets. So we have it in Sweden, we have it in Germany and the UK. And we have also started to enter the very important French market where we're currently negotiating with a, uh, a distributor to drive sales in the future. And in APAC, that's really around Japan. And this summer, we managed to obtain regulatory approvals. We managed to obtain reimbursement. And just uh, some weeks ago, we also announced a very important partnership with a local company called Muranaka, which is an extremely well-known medical company uh, in Japan. And together with them, we plan to launch uh, the cranial PSI implant here when, when we get into, into Q4. So essentially what we have is we have a very strong sales engine in place. It's a sales engine that we'll continue to, to build on. And it's also a sales engine that allows us to entertain ideas of potentially developing or bringing in new products because we have an engine that we can, we can roll it out in. So it's something that that I think us design should be extremely proud about. And it's, it's something that gives me as a CEO extremely confident in the future because this is what's really important as we talk about growth acceleration. If we just deep dive a little bit on the US market, the US is and it will be the most important market for us design in the years to come. We've seen good growth rates. 
In particular, since we uh, went direct uh, last year, we're really a peak in Q1 this year, or uh, Q1 before we got hit by the, by the pandemic. We have a very focused strategy by design, so we've targeted 10 states across the country with some additional metropolitan areas of particular interest. And those we serve, as I said, with our direct sales force, together with, uh, with our multiple partners that we've signed. We are also working very, very heavily together with key opinion leaders in the US. Bringing in new products, bringing in new technology into a, an American market, it's crucial to have support from, from surgeons and, and, you know, not just many, but also the really the strong advocates that we have. And that is something that I feel we've managed to build will continue to build it. It's, to me, it's, never, it's not something that never stops. We will continue to build that key opinion leader network that really drives the support for the Ossesign products in the years to come. If we take a, a, a look at how Ossesign is, is currently performing and has performed historically, then we've, we've, we've delivered constant high growth rates throughout many quarters and, 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 and several years. And we have a very strong underlying momentum, as you can see in the chart. Around the Q1, Q2 in 19, you know, something happened probably because of the IPO and it took away a little focus. But in Q1 this year, you saw that really accelerated uh, spike in, in, in sales, which is a direct result of some of the investments that were made, in particular in the US organization, earlier, earlier this year. But of course, we've been hit by the pandemic, like most other companies. Um, but also have to say that the recovery that we are seeing is actually fairly strong. And without going into too many details, what we're also starting to see here, I see throughout Q3, that is also a continuation of, of the trend that we are showing here. And just to give you an example, so in Germany, we've had an extremely strong recovery most likely simply because that Germany was one of the first countries that started to open up access again to hospitals. So we feel that Germany is a good proxy as we look into other markets in the world and what they're, when they're likely to open up and what we can drive when they do. So, so strong confidence in the underlying momentum in the business right now. If you look at what our strategic priorities are right now, then it, it's very clear, it's growth and it's innovation. We have some very distinct regional uh, strategies when it comes to the commercial entities. In the US, as I said, it's really about building market share deeper into the accounts, building more accounts, building key opinion leader network. For Japan, it's around launching our first product, which is the cranial PSI, and then Simultaneously, we will continue to work with the regulatory bodies to also make sure that we get reimbursement for the cranial plug product. For EU, it's really zooming in on the key markets. So it's Germany, it's UK, and it's France. Those are the key markets, and that's where we will put our time and effort. But kind of um, irrespective of which region we are talking about, we also have some priorities, most notably around driving clinical data and health economic. When you're a new, relative new company at least, and you're bringing in novel technology, a uh, novel way of doing things, then in order to get surgeon support, you need clinical data, and you also over time need to demonstrate how it impacts the wider society with health economic data. So that is something that is a key priority and something we will continue to focus on for many, many years. We will also look into expanding our portfolio. You know, as I showed you, we have a, a number of products there. It can be homegrown or it can be brought in, but we have a technology that we know we ha has the potential to go into new areas. We have a commercial platform that we also know we can leverage to launch new products. So we will continue to, to, to grow and expand the portfolio when we see meaningful opportunities. And last but not least, as we are uh, as we're getting more and more volume in the business, making sure that we, 
we keep driving margin improvements, that we keep an optimized, smooth business that it doesn't have excess cost because excess cost means we can invest less in the business. So, so we will continuously uh, look at ways to optimize our margin also as we get more and more scale. So in sum, what are the key reasons to, to invest in us design? As I said, us design is a growth case and it's around growth acceleration and I feel we're extremely well geared uh, to, to do that. We have a proprietary technology platform that serves a very clear unmet need in the market. It's clinically proven. We also now have indications clinically that it can work outside the area or the focus area we're in today in CMF. It's a very attractive niche. We have the global regulatory approvals uh, in place. We have the commercial infrastructure that allows us to leverage uh, new investments or opportunities that may arise. We also have a proven track record, and I think that's important as a relative young company, in, in particular towards the investor community, that you continuously deliver on your promises, and I feel we've, we, we've done that. And we have a proven track record that when we invest, we also see the payback. And then I think we've worked extremely well through the, the COVID-19. I mean, it, it, hasn't been, it hasn't been easy for everyone, but I actually feel that we're seeing a very strong momentum, both when we uh, report numbers as we just did in, in, in Q2, but also when we look at the under, underlying cases that run through our company. So, so that, those are the key reasons really to, to invest in us design. It's an extremely well-geared uh, growth company for the future. And as a final uh, remark, I just want to remind everyone about what the vision of us design is, and that is to be the global leader in regenerative solutions for bone repair. That is our vision. So with that, I want to say thank you very much. Um, hope it was inspiring for you, and um, thank you very much. Great. Thank you, Morten. So we'll move over to some, uh, some Q&A here. So first of all, you mentioned Japan has obviously been an important milestone for the company here, getting all approval, reimbursement and a partner in place. So could you talk a bit more about your recently appointed partner, Muranaka Medical, and perhaps also pivot into the steps that are left to really unlock the long-term potential for the Japanese yeah. market? Yeah, I think maybe I'll start with the steps first. I think as, as, as at least those of you that work in the medical field know that it's a very long process to actually get regulatory approval in Japan. Mm. So to me, we've overcome the big steps. It's also not easy necessarily to find a distributor. We also managed to do that. So I think we've, we've, we've overcome uh, the big steps and I'll come back to where we see the future. Uh, to, regarding Muranaka, it's an extremely well-known uh, Japanese company. It has a long, long history in the Japanese field. They have worked with multiple European uh, companies on, on the entry in Japan. Very strong network, and specifically in the field we are in, which is around you know, working with neurosurgeons, they are probably the ones to, to, to work with because they have an extremely strong network and key opinion leader network, not least, when it comes to... Uh, Neurosurgery. So, um, so we're extremely happy, and it's obviously not my credit; it's the team. But, but I think it it, it also says something about us design that you managed to to get a partnership with such a well-known uh, uh, local company. Yeah, it sounds like an interesting platform for for growth in, in Japan. So, looking over in the U.S., are you are you happy with the progress currently in the U.S. and and uh, uh, you, you have an ongoing launch of, of the volume product cranial plug going on as well. How is that launch going? It would be interesting to get an update for the US. <coughs> I think happy is a, is a difficult word to talk to when we're in the middle of a, of a pandemic. Um, so of course I'm not happy with the absolute numbers because if we hadn't had the, the pandemic as you saw on, in, in Q1, I think sales would have been much higher than what we were able to report in Q2. Um, I think having said that, we're seeing a very, very strong underlying, underlying momentum in, in the business. Uh, the cranial, we are, uh, we have, we are approaching uh, close to 100 uh, VAC approvals, which is basically a license to sell. Um, so, so we're really broadening our scope. We are signing more, uh, more partners and we have more key opinion leaders. So, so that I'm extremely happy about. And, and with cranial plug, it got launched just before uh, we, we got hit by the pandemic. 
uh, some really good signs, some great interest from the market. Um, uh, but of course, that's something that we'll have to kind of, as the market opens up, we'll have to, to relaunch in a way. Uh, but um, So that I'm extremely happy with, but I will expect a lot more uh, from the US in the years to come. And, and also, you mentioned it in the presentation, but uh, uh, Ostesheim Facial is obviously very an interesting product niche as well. How is that launch progressing? Because there has been some reformulation and, and uh, things going on with that product. Yeah, uh, I, I think fa uh, Ostesheim Facial is, is an extremely interesting product because it has many uh, application areas actually in the face. It can be used for, many, for multiple purposes. I think when it comes to the facial implant, it's clear we need to work a lot more with uh, with the surgeons, and we uh, and we really need to to work with the surgeons to generate clinical data. So so we see exactly where that product is best suited, also within kind of the the context of of a face. Um, but it 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 has a great technology. It's extremely novel. It doesn't exist in the market. Um, but it it the big launch is just not around the corner. There's more work to be done. I think mm. is the answer. Mm. And, and as a final question, so what, what are your key priorities now for the next 12 to 18 months and how will you balance this uh, sort of um, pivot between uh, focusing on very high sales growth and focusing on reaching positive cash flows? Yeah. What are you, how will you balance that and what are your priorities now? Yeah. I think I, I also tried to talk to you in the presentation. To me, the, the, the very, very clear objective is growth. We are growth case. We operate in a very high margin. Uh, area with good pricing, good underlying volume growth. So the most important for us is to drive revenue because once we drive revenue, profitability will follow, cash will follow. Um, and if we see meaningful uh, opportunities to invest in the business, to drive the business forward, we will be pursuing those mm -hmm. uh, rather than necessarily getting to a break-even point. I think it's much more important to, to drive a growth company here. Great. So thank you very much, Morten, and thank you thank for you all the viewers. Thank um, you. Good luck.